Um, so yeah, websites are complicated. We know that there's a lot going on, a lot of moving parts. Um, and you just can't set it up and move on. You have to kind of maintain it over time. Um, and they can break in many ways. Uh, so a few of the big ways they can break or things you want to look out for are slow load times over time. If you're not keeping your website up to date, um, not updating it, it can slow down, which can cause frustration for anyone going to your website. And that can lead to a high bounce rate, which means people are leaving your site and they're not you know, converting or wanting to buy any of your products you're trying to sell on your site. Something else to look out for is um, a confusing menu or navigation. I'm going to make sure it's easy for everyone to kind of go on those navigations, find the pages they're looking for, and be able to find the information um, that your site is providing them. Something else would be outdated content. Um, if someone's gone to your site and they see something from a few years ago, that might kind of push them away and kind of hurt your credibility and relevance as a business if they see kind of you're not keeping up to date with your website. Lastly, you're going to want to look at any broken links or error messages that are appearing because if, say, myself is going to the website and I see a bunch of broken links or error messages, I'm not really going to want to stay on that website for long and I'll probably jump somewhere else that might have the same information. So you want to make sure your website is free of any broken links or error messages. And the best thing is these are all fixable. Yeah. Yes, they are. So I want to dive into a couple of those elements um, that you hit that I don't think people feel in control of a lot of times. So slow load times, and and I'll just touch on it before we move on. Feel free to jump in on any of these elements. Um, slow load times can be a lot of different things. And this is one of those things, Greg, that you were mentioning that, you know, you kind of set it and it just kind of sits there and and we don't always inspect that deal. Yep. I can't tell you the number of times I've gone into um, a, a business when I was working on the retail side and there was just a lot of unnecessary code of services that we once used that we don't use anymore or multiple people's, um, you know, tag manager. There's just, they, there can sometimes be things that are, unnecessary to the business today that yep. need that kind of inspection. So I'm glad you touched on that. And it's one of those things that people don't realize that they could have control over. So whether it be you inspecting it yourself, talking to if you have a website provider or uh, a developer that you're working with, engaging them to make sure that that we're, you know, inspecting and cleaning those things up for a better experience. Um, Anything to add to that before I move on? No, I mean, I think you guys summed it up pretty pretty concisely. I mean, yeah, people just, there were so many things on the site that, that yeah. widgets, right? Things that were there once and then are kind of forgotten and, and are kind of lost in the background that, that do contribute to those slow load times. Um, it's good to have a, a, a keen eye on that and, and to regularly audit your site. Um, we're talking 30 days, we're talking, you know, 90 days, that frequently to make sure those things are not contributing to these poor user experiences. And I I do also want to know, the things that you had mentioned while we're coming at it today in today's discussion from a consumer experience perspective, mm -hmm. there are also real ramifications on a Google perspective too yes. on how Google's evaluating your website and and um, providing it the right authority to to rank and be vis visible for for consumers. So thank you for for talking us through that. Nick.